mysterious traveler. This is the mysterious traveler inviting you to join me on another journey into the realm of the strange and the terrifying. I hope you will enjoy the trip, that it will thrill you a little and chill you a little. So settle back, get a good grip on your nerves, and be comfortable, if you can. Where are we going? Why, we're going to visit a man who could change the soul of a human being from one body into another. In a story I call... They who sleep. My story begins late one foggy night in a dingy little room in the slum section of a great city. The occupant of the room, a small man, white-haired, his cheeks hollow from hunger, has just admitted a visitor whom he does not know and whom he is trying to send away. An expensively dressed young woman with a heavy veil hiding her face. But, my child, it cannot be me to whom you wish to speak. You have made some mistake. I haven't made any mistake. I've been hunting for you for days. I spent a good deal of money tracing you here. But I do not understand. Why should you wish to find me, Alexander Thomas, a penniless old man You did not always use the name Alexander Thomas. Once you called yourself Chadwin the Great, hypnotist beyond compare. Chadwin the Great? Yes, I, I once used that name. But Chadwin the Great no longer exists. I am only Alexander Thomas now. Listen to me, Chadwin. We've met before. Ten years ago, you gave a performance at the Bijou Theater. Oh, there are so many Bijou Theaters. You asked for volunteers to be hypnotized. I came up on the stage. I and my sister Rose. You hypnotized her easily, but you could not hypnotize me. Oh, there were so many. I cannot remember. No, but you can remember this newspaper clipping. <laughs> old story from the newspapers. Where did you get it? It says that you, Chadwin the Great, once performed the experiment of exchanging two men's souls. By the use of secret drugs and your great powers of hypnotism, you transferred one man's soul into another man's body. You cannot believe all the newspapers say. But you did this before witnesses. And one of the two men died. You went to prison for five years for manslaughter. Why do you come here to remind an old man of his tragedies? Go, please, leave me alone. No, Chadwin. For years I've kept this clipping, for years. Never knowing what impulse made me tear it out and save it. Until last week I found it again. And then I knew. You speak not like a woman, but like a soul possessed by devils. Perhaps I am. So you can transfer souls from one body to another? No, no, I cannot. How much would you charge to do it again? Do not ask that of me. I am old. I have been in prison. How much, Chadwin? Could you put my soul into another's body for $10,000? $10,000? Yes. Then you could live like a man again, not like a starving animal in this hovel. Once before I tampered with the eternal laws, I paid the penalty. And so did one of those I experimented upon. But which one, Chadwin? The which weaker one? one? He died. The other, the strong soul in its new body, lived. Ah, then I am ready. When can you do it? Tomorrow night? But my child, why should you risk your life for that which cannot be, which was not meant to be? Look, Chadwin. I shall raise my veil. Would you call me beautiful? Even pretty? No. I'm ugly. You are not ugly. Your face is strong. But if it were not twisted by bitterness... Enough of talking! How can you know what it means to a woman to be ugly? To lose the man you love to a woman you hate? Because you are plain. And she is so beautiful. Chadwin, will you do as I ask? To help you change with one who is beautiful. To help you to be loved for just a little. My child... Perhaps it is not such a great wickedness to do that. Then you'll do it? But it is only for a little while. You must understand that. For ten days, no more. Then the laws which cannot be violated with impunity require that your soul must return to your body. It's enough. It's all I want, Chadwin. Very well. 
I have here a small bottle. Here. Take it. Guard it carefully. When the moment comes, she, the other, must drink it in water. Yes. It will be easy. She will drift off to sleep. Then you, you must come to me. Uh, but not here. It would not be safe. Never mind. I know the place. The safest in the world. Very well. The exchange will be made, and I will see that she, in your body, slumbers dreamlessly. After ten days, she will wake and be herself again, with no memory whatever of what has happened. And uh, now, Miss... Vaughn. Helen Vaughn. Now, Miss Vaughn, who is this beautiful one with whom you would change places? The girl who just married the man I love. My sister, Rose Vaughn. Good morning, Bessie. Good morning, Miss Helen. Where's Miss Rose? She's gone downstairs yet? Mrs. Tabor, you must learn to say now, Miss Helen. Mrs. Tabor, then? Uh, she's in her room, Miss Helen. Is uh, Mr. Tabor with her? Yes, he is. All right, Bessie, thank you. Helen, is that you? We thought we heard your voice. Come on in. Leonard's just leaving for the office. Good morning, Helen. How's the best sister-in-law I ever had? Hello, Rose. Leonard? Darling, what's the matter? Uh, I know. Did you hear what time this young lady got in last night? It must have been quite a party. Oh, Leonard, I hope you aren't keeping tabs on Helen. No, but I did hear the clock strike three just as her door closed. <laughs> <laughs> well, me for the office. First, a goodbye kiss. Oh, gosh. I sure picked myself a beautiful wife. Oh, run along, you silly. <laughs> Bye, Helen. Got a sisterly kiss for me? Leonard... Don't put your arms around me, please. Well, there's sisterly affection for you. You'd think she hated me. Oh, run along, Leonard. They probably need you downtown to polish off a big deal. Yeah, they probably do at that. Okay, I'm on my way. Bye, you two. Bye, darling. Well, Helen, you are in a mood this morning. I just think you two carry this lovey-dovey business to a ridiculous extreme. Helen, it's as if... Well, as if you... Dislike seeing Leonard kiss me. You don't have to be constantly kissing him in front of... of other people, do you? Helen. Oh, my dear, I didn't realize. Didn't realize what? Didn't realize that... Oh, Helen, darling, believe me. Someday the man will come along who will mean just as much to you as... as Leonard does to me. You'll find him. I'll help you find him. Listen, I'll give some parties and invite a lot of new... Go Rose. Let go of me. Don't go gushing over me, you idiot. Helen, how can you be so cruel? Oh, stop sniveling like that. I'm sorry, Helen, but you're always so sharp when anybody tries to be nice to you. And you, you're always so nice to everybody, so soft, so sweet. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Rose. I always forget how the least quarrel upsets you. Well, here... Drink this, Rose. There's a sedative in it. Something quite harmless. It'll soothe your nerves. Oh, all right. Oh, oh nasty stuff. Now lie down in your bed. That's it. Just a few moments now, and you'll be drifting off to slumberland, my beautiful sister. Oh, it is quick, isn't it? Feels drowsy already. You do? Huh. And you must give in to the feeling, you hear? Don't fight it. It feels so queer. It's as though I were on a boat. A little boat. Rose? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, Helen, I hear you. Seems such a long ways away. Such a long way. Rose, you're to come to me when I call you. Do you hear? Yeah. You're to sleep for a while. Then when I call, no matter where yeah. I am, 
You're to come to me. Yes, I'll come to you. I'll come to you. She's asleep. Chadwin's drug is working. The rain! Come. Well, let it rain. Yes, let the skies open and drench the earth. Let the rain fall like a curtain, like a cloak to hide the rebirth of Helen Vaughn. Leaving her sister Rose in a slumber so deep it was almost death-like, Helen Vaughn hurried to her room. There she wrote a note addressed to Rose and Leonard, explaining that she had decided suddenly to go off by herself on a trip to Mexico and that they would probably not hear from her for some time. Then she put on her hat and coat and slipped out. All day she waited in a hotel. Then when night came, she picked up Chad with the brake in a rented car and drove him through the storm into a spot well outside the city where she turned into an ancient cemetery. There she brought the car to a stop before a low building of white marble over which ivy and moss had grown for many years. With a heavy key, she opened the massive padlock and they entered, shutting the door behind them. The air in this old mausoleum is dank odor of a charnel house. But where else could the living lie asleep, peaceful and undisturbed, as safely as here among the sleeping dead? No, I will not go through with it. You already have your money? You can knock back out now. Then in heaven's name, let us be finished quickly. Quickly, yes. The storm should hide the car from the cemetery guards. But we must take no chances. Now, here's a flashlight I brought. I'll turn it on. Look there, Chadwin. At the tiers of compartments this tiny stone building holds. Each compartment with its iron door. Each holding within it a coffin. In which lies the dust of a vault. I see them, yes. Twelve of them. This one, here on the bottom, is empty. Meant someday to hold the body of Helen Vaughan. Tonight it shall receive her. No, no, this is madness. I'll open it. There. See that narrow, dark compartment? So small, so quiet, so restful, so safe from disturbance. In it, for the next ten days, shall rest my body. Holding the soul of my sister Rose. No, no, there must be some other way. None that is safe. While my body sleeps and I am absent from it, it must be where no one can find it. And here, no one ever will. I do not like it. Hold the light. I'll slide into it. It's quite roomy enough. The stone is chilly, but what matters that to one who is asleep? Go in. Rose Vaughan, hear me. Enter the body that awaits you here. Enter quickly and wait. I was startled. I guess 
I guess I must have been dreaming. Rose, Rose, what's happened to you? Why, your voice sounds just like Helen's. Really, Leonard? That's odd. Perhaps I'm catching a cold. No, no. Now you you sound like yourself again. But for a moment, I'd, I'd have sworn it was Helen speaking. Oh, I guess I've been so worried, I'm, I'm just imagining it. Oh, Leonard, hold me close. Close, darling, close. Always, Rose. Always. Always. Yes, always. She'll never have you back. Never. What, what are you saying, Rose? I was just thinking of how much I love you. So much that I'll never let anything take you away from me. Never. In the days that followed, Leonard found his beautiful wife, Rose, so strangely changed. You, you've been different somehow these last ten days. In fact, ever since Helen went away so unexpectedly. Have I, Leonard? How? Well, you've been gayer. More headstrong, too. It's almost as if you'd acquired a whole new character. Well, perhaps I have. And how do you like this new wife of yours? Well, I do, and I... Don't? Oh, please, I I don't mean it. It's just that... Well, I was so in love with the old Rose, it's a little hard to get used to the new. And all these bills that you're running up. Why, that's not like the Rose you used to be. Oh, Leonard... I do hope you're not too mad at me because... Well, what is it this time? Another fur coat? <laughs> Worse than that. We're going to give a party. Another? Why, there's three in ten days. Rose, I forbid it. You can't, Leonard, because I've invited everybody already. Rose, it's so unlike you. You used... Why, you act more like Helen than like yourself these days. Never mind, darling. You'll get used to the change in me. In time. <laughs> Ignoring her husband's displeasure, Rose, or should I say, Helen, went ahead with her plans for a party that night. And when early in the evening, a small gray-haired man presented himself at the door and asked for her, he sent word by Bessie that she would not see him. I'm sorry, Mr. Chadwin. Uh, Mrs. Tabor says she cannot see you. Um, she says she does not know anyone named Chadwin. But she does. Ten days ago I was here. I gave you an envelope for her. It had a key in it. Oh, surely you remember? Yes, but just the same, she says she doesn't know you. Now, please go, or I'll have to call an officer. Did you tell her what I said? This was the tenth day? Yes. And she said she had no idea what you were talking about. All right. I'm going. I must do what I can by myself. And while the gay party went on, miles away in the old cemetery, Chadwin the Great worked frantically with a hammer and chisel to force the padlock on the door of the mausoleum in which Unknown to the world, a sleeping girl lay hidden. Look, got to get it open. Won't let me into her house. Don't even talk to me. Won't let me warn her. She wa What is that? Dogs coming this way. Hey, somebody trying to break into the lawn mausoleum. The dogs. I must run for it. Look out! He's getting away. Hey, you brave runner! Here, somebody! They miss me. I've got to get back to town. I must warn her. She's got to know. Miss Vaughan, thank heaven this time you heeded my message. I won't have you coming around to my house this way, do you hear? You must never come here again. But you do not understand. The ten days is up tonight. Now. Your time is over. Are you trying to scare me, Chadwin? To get more money from me? Money? No. I'm just trying to tell you. It was understood ten days only. More is not allowed. You fool. Do you think I ever intended to give up Rose's body once I had it? In that narrow crypt in the tightly locked mausoleum, my body has long since died from lack of air. And Rose has died with it. But I remain alive. So, that is what you planned. I should have guessed. But it is not so. 
Your body is not dead. It is in a sleep so deep that it scarcely breathes. Needs no food, no water. But sometime tonight the dog will wear off and your sister Rose will claim her body again while you, you, Helen Vaughn, will wake to find yourself locked within a burial crypt. No. No, it's not true. It is true. And you will not be asleep. You will be awake, needing air. And there will be no air. You're just trying to frighten me. Tonight I tried to open the tomb to save you. I was driven away by guards with dogs. But what can I do? Only if we can reach the tomb in time to open it, can you be saved? And we must go now. I'll get the key. And we must hurry. Hurry! <laughs> There's the mausoleum, Miss Vaughan. Pray heaven the guards are not waiting. They won't be. We fooled them by leaving the car outside and walking up this back path. Now hurry, Chip. What is it, Miss Vaughan? I, I don't know. For a moment, I, I felt so dizzy. So weak. It's Rose trying to return to her body. We cannot waste an instant. Hold me up. Something is pulling at me, tugging at me. Darling, where are you? She's speaking through her own lips. No. No, not yet. Go back, you hear me, Rose? Go back. Here's the mausoleum. The key. Give me the key. Here it is. Quickly. She's pushing at me so hard. No. Oh, Darling, help me. Everything is so dark. Where are you? Go back. Go back, I tell you. Chedwin, have you got the lock on again? It won't unlock. It must. They put a new padlock on. Oh, dear heavens, they've changed the lock. Darling, help no. Me. No. It's getting dark. Dark. It's hopeless. We cannot enter. Darling, where are you? No. We can't both be in the same body. Go back. Darling, I'm frightened. Don't force me out. Help me. Go back Helen. where you were. Help me. Wait, Rose, wait. Help me. Helen. Helen. No. No, don't. You mustn't. You mustn't. The guards, they're coming back. Where am I? What happened to me? Sleep, child. Sleep a little longer and wake without memory. Please. Yes. Yes. Oh, I can do nothing now. And the guards, they must not catch me. They must not. Here it is. We've got him this time. Holy catch. It's a girl. It's Mrs. Taylor. Asleep on the steps of her own family mausoleum. Say, we got to get her out of here. Help me lift her out. Yeah. Hey, wait. Did you hear something then? Like somebody calling a long ways off? Listen. I can't breathe. Yes, help me. I'm Well, do you hear anything? Nah, I can't hear anything, just the wind. Come on, we got to phone Miss Tabor's husband. She may be sick. Come on now, no time to lose. Help me, Help me. 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 Help do you remember anything about a man named Chadwin? Chadwin? No, I don't, Leonard. Well, Bessie says he called several times last week to see you. The last time was the night of the party. You're sure you don't remember him? Uh, no, Leonard. I, I'm sorry, oh, but... Oh, it's all right, darling. I just thought maybe you might have begun to remember some of the things that, that happened during those ten days when you, well, weren't yourself. It's so strange. As if my mind had been asleep the whole time. Is there something about Chadwin in the paper? He committed suicide last night. Oh. His body was found near the old family mausoleum. He left a mysterious note saying he was paying for some transgression. How strange. I wondered if he could have given us any clue as to... as to how you came to leave the party so suddenly that night and drive to the cemetery. Oh, but... It's all over now and not worth worrying about. I I'd remember if I could, but when I try, I, I become suddenly frightened and, and feel as if I were locked in in some dark, tiny space where I can't breathe. All right uh, now, darling, all right. Let's forget the whole thing. Uh, now, let's see what came in the morning mail. 
Maybe there's a letter from Helen. You know, it's high time we were hearing from her. She's really not acting much like a sister being lost for long without even finding her letter. You know where she is. This is the mysterious traveler again. I'm afraid Leonard and Rose are going to have to wait a long time for a letter from Helen. In fact, I'll be very much surprised if they ever get one. I suppose it'll never occur to them to look in the old mausoleum. In fact, uh, since they both feel a distinct aversion to going near it, it may never be opened again. But I don't suppose that'll make much difference to Helen. <laughs> uh, now... Now, if you were wishing uh, you could step into somebody else's shoes, maybe what happened to Helen will make you change your mind. You know, I knew a man once who... He, he stole somebody else's body, only to discover when it was too late that he... Oh, you're getting off here? Well, perhaps we'll meet again soon. I take this same train every week at this same time. You have just heard Chapter 55 of The Mysterious Traveler, a series of dramas of the strange and terrifying. In tonight's story, They Who Sleep, Philip Clark played Chadwin, Gertrude Warner played Helen, and Helen Clare played Rose. The Mysterious Traveler is written by Bob Arthur and David Cogan. Original music is played by Henry Silverne, and the entire production is under the direction of Jock McGregor. <laughs> Listen next week to a tale titled Escape Through Time. Another tale of the mysterious traveler. The mysterious traveler is presented by WOR Mutual from the WOR Studios in New York. This is Mutual. Mm.